Good morning, everyone. How thankful we are to have this unique opportunity to worship together through God's Holy Spirit. God's presence. Hmm. In the middle of March, I had an urging to go to the books of Habakkuk and Jeremiah. While I appreciate the historical significance of the Old Testament, I must admit those two books would not have been my first choice to go to back to back. But as I have come to know, God's nudgings in my life are not to be ignored. Those two books ended up revealing to me much about God's desire for his presence to be known and felt among his people. God's message for the people of that time and to us today is a reminder that God is real. Wherever we find ourselves, our God is right beside us. I believe a key to sensing the presence of God in our lives is to actively seek him. Take a moment to breathe deeply. Use your senses. Hear and feel God in the music that reaches deep down into your soul. See God's creative beauty in spring bursting forth around us. Feel God in your love and compassion for the hurting world we find ourselves in. Listen for God's still, small voice. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 4610. Let us pray. Dearest Lord Jesus, your presence in our lives changes us. Enable us to engage our senses, to begin to tap into all the ways you make your presence known to us. You, Lord, are our God. We look to you for guidance. Fill us with your presence so we may be the light this hurting world needs. In your precious name, we ask these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing hallelujah. This is our first hymn this morning. It's hymn number 50 in your blue hymnal. If you do not have a hymnal at home, but you got the email this morning, you can look this up in the email. There's an attachment that has the PDF of this song. You can either print it out or look at it on another device. You can try to sing parts with us. Praise the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Here we go. Praise the Lord, sing hallelujah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise the Lord, our great creator, all his angels praise proclaim. All his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise the Lord, you have none have. And you floods above the sky. Praise the Lord, sing hallelujah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is forever, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Let them praise the Lord Creator, they were made at His command. God established them forever, His decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise your Maker, raging seas your creatures all. Fire and hail and snow and vapor, 
neighbor's stormy winds that hear his call. Praise the Lord, sing hallelujah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, every hill and mountain high, creeping things and beast and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all you people, rulers great and judges all. Praise his name, young men and women, ancient ones and children small. Praise the Lord, sing hallelujah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted for and sky. Amen. Good morning, Good morning Nashville. Nashville. Good morning. Nashville from the Drexels. Good morning, Nashville. Good morning, Nashville. Good morning, Nashville. Good morning, Nashville. Morning, Nestville. Good 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 morning, Nestville. Hope you all have a good day.
presence. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. All through the salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. The sun of light and the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory. as a community in prayer, I want you to all know that as a staff and elders and leadership team, we are praying for you daily. We are praying for your hearts and your minds and your bodies and just that um, the joy of the Lord would abound. Today we are lighting the peace lamp for wisdom. Wisdom for our individual families, wisdom for Neffsville's leadership teams, wisdom for our um, local government and wisdom for our government as um, our country decides and, and navigates this tough time. So we are lighting the peace lamp for wisdom, God's wisdom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we serve a God who is all-knowing, all-powerful, we serve a God who has plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope in a future. We thank you, God, that you are not far off, but you are right here with us. And so we come before you, we come humbly before you as your children, asking God for your wisdom, asking for your heavenly wisdom during this confusing, hard time. God, you are the one who makes order out of chaos. You are the one who makes a way. And we pray, Lord, that you will give each of our families, that you will give Neffsville's elders and staff and all our leadership, that you will give our local government wisdom, that you will give our national leaders your wisdom, God. More than anything, wisdom on how to move forward during this time. And we pray for a peace, your peace in this time where people are scared, where people are anxious. We pray for heavenly peace to fall on our land, to fall on our church, and to fall on our families. We pray for those who are, who are sick, God. We pray for those who are struggling mentally and physically during this time. We pray for healing, the healing that only you can bring. We pray for our children as they walk through this time of school at home, as we, we pray for our seniors who are missing um, really important milestone things that they were looking forward to. We pray for peace for their hearts and joy that even they can't understand, joy from heaven. God, we love you. We trust you, God. We choose this day to trust you and serve you. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Good morning, Nestville Mennonite Church, and happy Mother's Day to all of those out there who mother us. We are so thankful for you. I have not been able to completely decide if being a pastor's kid is a good thing or a bad thing, but I would encourage you not to ask my daughters today. <laughs> I have asked them to talk a little bit about what they love about their mother. Um, before I do that, I just want to say that my mom 
is amazing at celebrating and making my kids and myself feel like we're the most amazing thing on the planet. And that's one of the things I appreciate about her. And I had two fabulous, sweet, sweet grandmothers, and I am very thankful. Taylor? Hi, I'm Taylor Hess. Happy Mother's Day to all those women out there who take time to nurture young people. I have some things that I'd like to share about my magnificent mother. She made me say that. For one thing, she always tries to make me as happy as can be, and also she gives me pretty good advice. Plus, she tells me pretty bad jokes that I laugh at anyway, but I think that we have a pretty special bond, and I believe that it's unbreakable. I'm so grateful to have a mother like her. Hi, I'm Olivia Hess, and I would like to share a few things about why I love my mother. First off, um, we laugh a lot together. Uh, I think of her as not just my mother, but as my best friend. So um, we both like to have fun, and we both think that we're pretty comical, so we have some good laughs. Um, I'd also like to say that she always puts us before her um, when it's like her coming home from work and she's really tired, but she still takes the time to make us dinner, so we're all happy. Um, so I really appreciate that about her. I also love that she's so hardworking. She works really long shifts at the hospital, risking her health. Um, and she's just always wanting to help people. I'd also like to say that um, she cares and loves for us, loves us so much, and I love that about her as well. Um, and I also want to say Happy Mother's Day to everyone. I hope you have a great Sunday and show your mother's love. Let's pray for our moms. Heavenly Father, we praise you for our mothers. We are so disappointed that so many will miss being with their mothers today, but we praise you for things like technology that empowers us to gather. Lord Jesus, we pray to thank you for our mothers. We pray that you will be with our mothers, Lord, and we pray for those who mother us. We praise you for our caregivers, for our grandparents, and all of those who pour love into our lives. Lord Jesus, in, in these times, we always pray for those who would like to be mothers that are trying. We pray that you would bless them. We pray for our young mothers. And I think of Brianna Moyer, who just became a mom on Friday evening. We pray for those young mothers, and we praise you for our children. We pray, Lord, for those who were never able to have children. What a hard journey that must be. And we praise you for being with us. And we praise you for those who are missing their mothers, whose mothers have gone too soon, or mothers who are unable to be with us for all sorts of reasons. Lord Jesus, we pray. Guide us and lead us on this Mother's Day that we will celebrate and that you will be with us. Thanks for moms. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, wait a minute. I thought I was your best friend. Um, wait, but I thought I was. <laughs> oh, no! I'm your sister.
Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. If you have ever traveled with children, you probably have heard the question, are we there yet? Or how much longer? Or maybe you have taken your children to an event that they don't really want to go to and partway through they lean over and whisper in your ear, how much longer is this going to last? Why do children ask these types of questions? Is it because they are bored easily? Are they impatient? Or could it be that they are looking forward to something better after it is over? They look forward to whatever is next. You could say that they have hope for what is coming next for them. They have a, an expectation of something better than what they are currently experiencing right now. They have hope in whatever is next. The vacation spot is much better than the travel to the vacation spot. Hope by definition, is a feeling of expectation and a desire for certain thing to happen. In our passage this morning that was read by Jerry, the psalmist is struggling with what life has for him right now. He is tr struggling to find a connection with God. And so he writes in verses 1 and 2, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. The deer needs water to survive, especially if he has been in recent danger or if he is wounded. So too, the psalmist needs God. He needs the living God to help him to survive what life is giving him at this moment. He remembers better days in the past. In verse 4, he writes, When he could go to the house of God with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. He's thinking, boy, those were the days. The fact that he cannot go to the house of God has his soul downcast. His soul is disturbed within him. And yet, in verse 5, he writes that he needs to put his hope in God, for he will praise his Savior and his God. We all experience times, like the psalmist, where God seems distant. We pour out our soul. We remember what it used to be like. It is during those times that we need to put our hope in God. In fact, many of us might be feeling that way the past two months. It has been nine weeks since we have gathered together in person, sharing our praise, sharing our joys and our struggles. 
we might be saying to ourselves, boy, those were the days. I believe that many of us have thoughts of, we are in this together. We are all in this together, like the slogan has said. And yet there are other days where we do feel isolated. We feel all alone. We might be asking ourselves, where is God? Our soul is disturbed. Our soul is downcast. And like the psalmist, we need to say, I will put my hope in God. And then the psalmist in verse 7 is washed over by waves of doubt. And he says, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. In those moments we say to God, why have you forgotten me? And again, we need to realize that we need to put our hope in God. But why? Why should we put our hope in God? It is because we know the living God. We are not crying out to no one. No, we are crying out to a living God. The God who, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, overcame death. He is alive. That is what Mary told the disciples. He is alive. And so it is this God, the living God, that we put our hope in. Hope of something better than we are currently experiencing. This hope was realized by the people who encountered Jesus. I think of the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. I can imagine she cried out to God, Why have you forgotten me? You see, she had spent all her money on doctors. And instead of getting better, she grew worse. She had, I'm sure, had lost all hope. And then one day she heard about this man named Jesus. He was healing the blind and the lame. Could it be that she could also be healed? She had a glimmer of hope, like the spring flowers bursting through the ground. She thought to herself, if only I could touch the clothes of Jesus, maybe I could experience healing. And so she goes to, in search of Jesus. She pushes her way through the crowd. She reaches out and touches Jesus' robe. Instantly, she was healed. She knew that her bleeding had stopped. Her hope that she had was realized. She knew hope in a whole new way. Mary and Martha, friends of Jesus, had hope as Lazarus became ill. They sent word to Jesus, your friend Lazarus, he is ill. Please come. And yet Jesus did not get there in time, and Lazarus dies. When Jesus arrives, Martha goes out to greet him and says to Jesus, If only you had been here. If only you had been here. Lazarus would still be alive. Martha did have hope in the resurrection in the last days, and yet her hope was soon realized in Jesus, because Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we live. It is this hope that we can have in our God. The New Testament writers refer to this hope numerous times. And we're going to look at different passages. First, in his letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul writes these words. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised, by those who call themselves the circumcision, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We were once without hope, because we, but because we know the living God, the one who conquered death and gives us eternal life, we can have hope. We experience many difficulties in our life. Sickness, death of loved ones, broken relationships, injuries, pandemics, and the list could go on. 
in all these circumstances, we can and should live in hope. Paul, in Romans chapter 5, says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Let me read that again. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It is not easy to glory in our sufferings. In fact, it can seem impossible. But when we realize that they produce perseverance, character, and hope, we must. God's love is there to see us through our sufferings. Job was a fine example of perseverance. He had hope in God despite what his friends and his wife might have said to him. As I reflect on times of suffering in my life, I realize that God brings about change. God was there even when it didn't seem like it, when he seemed far off and distant. God has taught me to rely on him no matter what the circumstances. He has taught me that I need to spend time. Like Hunter said last week in his sermon, be still and know that I am God. I need to do this. I need to take time to be still, to carve out time in my schedule to spend with God. God has made me aware of his forgiveness and his grace. He has taught me that I do not need to fear. All of these are hard to learn sometimes. God is still teaching me. Because the problem is that I need to relearn it over and over again. I ask the question, what does God want to teach me during this time? What does God want to teach you? What does God want to teach us as a congregation? Are we using this time that we have to seek God? Many of us are spending time at home more than we used to, are used to being at home. We are spending time together as families, sharing family dinners five, six, seven days a week instead of maybe one or two. How are we using the time that we didn't seem to have a mere eight weeks ago. I believe the writer of Hebrews has some advice for us as we read in chapter 10. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Can we hold unswervingly to the hope we profess? Are we drawing near to God? Am I drawing near to God? Even though we are not gathering together in person, each of us in, as individuals or as family can draw near to God and hold on to the hope that we profess because God is faithful during times of uncertainty, times when God seems distant, when our soul might be downcast, when we cry out, God, why have you forgotten me? Those are the times where we need to draw near to him and put our hope in him because he is a faithful God. Peter tells us in his book, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this you greatly rejoice, though for now a little while you may have had to suffer grief 
in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. We are in a time when we as a church, both the local congregation and the greater church, can show our community the genuineness of our faith because it is a living faith, the faith and hope we have in a living God. I pray that our souls like the deer pant and thirst for the living God, that we put our hope in God who has overcome death so that we might live. The psalmist in verse 11, as he ends this psalm, says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I encourage you, put your hope in God during this time. Praise him. Offer your thankfulness. Praise be to God, our living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. again to me I will draw near to you I will draw near to you Better is
is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court. Thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court. Thousands elsewhere. May the God, the living God, give you hope in this day. And may you go sharing the genuineness of your faith to our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.